What a lot of people don't know is that the mountain gorilla is a critically endangered species. When Diane Fossey cried out for help, there was only 240 of them left. Now in the Virunga Massif, there's 480, and the veterinary care has been responsible for half of that growth. We're in Rwanda at the Gorilla Doctor's headquarters, and I can show you actually on this map, we were right here in the small country of Rwanda, it's about the size of Maryland. The gorillas up here are 90% of them are habituated, which means that they have a neutral experience with people. They're not afraid of people, but they're not aggressive towards people, which allows us to monitor their health, and actually it's the key to us being able to treat them. The gorilla doctors have three roles as far as clinical medicine goes. They go up and do routine health checks to make sure that all the animals are healthy, and then we get called from the trackers and guides to go up and do a medical assessment and if that assessment says that the animal is either injured, human induced injury or there's a life threatening problem then we'll go ahead and treat. When we're up in the field, it can be a simple intervention like giving an antibiotic or even a dewormer like for mange or some ectopic parasites. Down here is where we run the clinical records, sterilize all the equipment and all the background logistics. Well, if we get a call to go up and see the gorillas, it can be a 10 minute walk to see the sick gorilla or it can be a four hour walk. It all depends on the day. It could be pouring rain and muddy and miserable or it could be bone dry. But we're really lucky because we have porters that help us carry the equipment up. Otherwise, we'd never be able to make it. Jack Hanna came to Rwanda a couple of decades ago and he fell in love with both the country and the gorillas. I mean, his support means a lot to us. He's loved the gorillas for as long as I have and he's a big supporter. One of our favorite places that Sue and I go to is Rwanda. We've been going to Rwanda since 1982 because we heard about Rwanda through Diane Fossey. I was fascinated by Rwanda and the gorillas. This is our favorite place in the world to visit and we do it every single year. Jack and I are standing in the potato fields here just outside the buffalo wall, which is the edge of the park. And we're going to go in and see a gosha, which is one of my favorite groups. These things sting like a bee, stinging nettles. I got my knee just now, and the gorillas eat these things. How the gorillas eat them, I don't know. We're getting close. Come on. Right now we're all taking our gear off because the gorillas are close and Mike of course comes here all the time. But for us that are visitors, we have to drop everything. Sticks, other than one camera, that's all you're allowed in here right now. And this is exciting. Some of the sound we do is like this grand sound. <coughs> In general, it's a friendly sound. The girl they do do they communicate with each other and that way to make sure that everything is safe. So when you come as intruders, we have to create a good relationship. So we do that sound say <coughs> at times some girl can respond, at times they don't, but at least they can <laughs> they can have an idea that there are people coming, then they, they don't immediately react, they take some time to see are these the right person or they are not. As gorilla doctors we come up here and we have a list of about six symptoms that we're looking for to see that are normal and if they're normal that's checked off. All 22 individuals in an hour or so. These are all documented on a sheet and then entered into the computer when we get back. Thank you. 
It's really a thrill to work on a species this magnificent and, and to actually know that you're making a difference in the wild. My personal biggest thrill was doing an, a surgery on a two-day-old gorilla to save his life, and it's now I see it every so often. It's just wonderful to see it walking around. Thanks to these veterinarians, we will have these animals for generations to come. If it weren't for the veterinarians, a lot of these species would have been gone a long time ago.